Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. My name is Spencer, and I am recording this on May 2nd at 6.58 a.m. in the morning times. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little sleepy. Not too bad. Let's do this. The first word in this episode is explorer. E-X-P-L-O-R-E-R. There was a movie from the 80s, which I've been wanting to rewatch, called The Explorers. And uh, I remember it being kind of weird and funny. And, you know, it was just a weird sort of fun kids 80s movie. Um, but yes, I want to rewatch that. Weird, fun stuff, fun stuff. Okay, the, the kids went exploring into space. Right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. The first word is the word I already said, and it is a noun from 1602. Number one, one that explores, especially a person who travels in search of geographical or scientific information. This is not the type of exploring where you're trying to find yourself. Uh, this is where you are you're trying to go learn, learn some sciencey stuff. National Geographic hires people, scientists, and they are called National Geographic Explorers. They call them explorers. They go around the world. They travel. They do sciencey stuff. They learn. They they talk. They teach people. And uh, they're, it's all in the name of science and learning about our world and uh, maybe maybe even stuff outside of our world. I don't think they're necessarily traveling to space, but they are maybe studying space. Um, cool stuff, volcanoes, water, animals, other things. Uh, okay, number two, this one would be capitalized. And this is a member of a co-ed scouting program of the Boy Scouts of America for young people ages 14 to 20, focusing on career awareness. Uh, yeah, a program called the Explorers, I guess. Um, co-ed, that's good, through the Boy Scouts of America. I, I don't keep up on my Boy Scout news, but I do feel like in recent years, are they going co-ed or they're, cha they're they've been changing some things up. I know that they've had some issues. Um, in other parts of the world, there are scout programs, and I think a lot of those are actually co-ed. Um, but this is a specific thing, 14 to 20 in America, they're they're on a career pair, a pathway, career awareness, and they're what are they doing? I don't know. They're scouting. They're scouting stuff. Uh, okay. Ooh, my sound effect today is going to be. I used to be able to do a good explosion, but I have not been able to do it so good in recent years, because our next word is the word explosion. Noun from 1667, number one, the act or an instance of exploding. And the example is injured in a laboratory explosion. Wow, what, what was going on in the writer's mind when they wrote that one? The laboratory exploded and people got injured. Oh, I've got beaker glass inside of my eyeballs. And I got gases melting my skin. That's how I got injured in the laboratory explosion. And then I turn into a mutant. And I will take over the world. Okay, number two is a large-scale, rapid, or spectacular expansion or bursting out or forth. As in, the explosion of suburbia. Ooh, that I remember driving... 10, 15 minutes from my home when I was a kid and my dad said, I remember when this was like fields and cornfields and now it's like malls and shops and stuff. So yes, in the 50s, 60s, there was a big explosion of suburbia. Uh, what else? What are the ex other examples? An explosion of red hair. An explosion of red hair? It's a large-scale, rapid, or spectacular expansion or bursting out or forth. I guess that's like, if you got, like, what's her name? Merida? Was her name Merida? How How is Spencer coming up with things like that when he can't come up with the most common words? 
Uh, the Pixar movie called Brave. Brave. I believe her name was Merida. Um, she had an explosion of red hair. Yep, that's her name. Uh, because it's just it, it's like exploding out of her head. It's not a. It's not literally a sudden outgrowth of red hair, but it's it looks like it's an explosion. That's a more metaphorical usage of it. Um, okay, number three is the release of occluded breath that occurs in one kind of articulation to stop consonants. Which one of these? Which what? Which sound? The explosion of occluded breath that occurs in one kind of articulation of stop consonants. P, p, p. It's probably that one. The P's. The plosives. Blah, 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 blah. Actually, that word is related to our next word. We'll get there. Yes, because your lips are stopping the sound. And then when you say the word, there's the air from inside the mouth, mouth goes p, p, p out of your lips. Spencer Parks. That's how I should say my name all the time. Parks. Um, I want to mention a couple of shows, a couple of things out there in the world that have a lot of explosions. You know, we love movies with explosions and stuff. But uh, Mythbusters, back when that was on the Discovery Channel, on the TV, uh, they did lots and lots of explosions. And that was always fun. And it was in slow motion. And these days... You know, there's a lot, a lot of YouTubers and TV shows that are doing explosions. But one that I watch pretty regularly is the Slow Mo Guys. And they do lots of explosions and in extra, extra slow motion. And it's very cool. Recently, they had one where they had like built a cardboard or wood minesweeper. No, I did it again. That's no, not minesweeper. It's Minecraft. I don't play it, so forgive me. They they exploded this the couple of characters in a in a very safe situation. It's all about the safety. So shout out to the uh, MythBusters, the slow mo guys, and all those other people who were safely creating explosions. The uh, the large scale rapid or spectacular expansion of bursting out or forth. This word is from uh, the Latin explosio. That would be a fun name, uh, which means act of driving off by clapping. The act of driving off by clapping. So what, are you like clapping at a bunch of sheep? Are you a shepherd and you're trying to shoo them? Come on, let's get going. I'm clapping at you. Go forth. The next word is explosive. A plosive is in the explosive. This is the first form, adjective from 1667. Yes, they were both 1667. 1A, relating to, characterized by, or operated by explosion. As in, an explosive hatch. Hmm, the hatch explodes? Open, what sort of hatch is this? When you're in a submarine underneath the water and everything is flooded... In a horror movie with sharks, and uh, you gotta you gotta explode the hatch to get it open. What character? What an explosive! There must be some kind of explosive hatch. I don't know. One B, resulting from or as if from an explosion, as in explosive population growth. All of a sudden, there's all these people. Either they they go what the the west had a big explosive population growth when all the people went over there for for to for to find gold you got to find gold and other stuff just new new situations new life uh, and then all they all and then after uh, world war 2 there was an explosive population growth when all the people came back from the war and they were like hey let's get busy and start a family let's boom the babies Number 2A, tending to explode, as in an explosive person. This person tends to explode. Mm, I think what we're talking about here are their, maybe their emotions. Their emotions might explode. Their body is not physically exploding. This person is not literally explosive. They are 
they are. They get very heated very quickly. To be likely to erupt in or produce hostile reaction or violence, as in an explosive ghetto situation. Hmm. Okay. Likely to erupt in or produce hostile or hostile reaction or violence. I mean, I guess what this example is saying is that in the ghetto, uh, there is a lot of violence, possible violence ready to go, because I think what the dictionary is saying is that there's a lot of gangs in the ghetto? Uh, very odd and interesting example there, dictionary. Maybe there could have been something else. Okay, but yeah, hostile reaction. I mean, war. I feel like war situation would have been, maybe been a better example. Explosively is an adverb. Explosiveness is a noun. Explosive. Ex explosive <laughs> the second form of explosive is a noun from 1849 number one an explosive substance the stuff that is going to do the explosion what 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 is this what i don't know enough about explosives c4 d2 is that an explosive dynamite tnt how many explosives can Spencer name? I think that's it. I think those are the only ones that he knows about. Something that when f gunpowder, uh, something that when lit by fire or an electrical current of some kind, um, once it reacts with that, this chemical reaction happens and it, the, the chemicals inside of it are like, what is happening? I don't like being around any of you anymore. I'm going to run away fast. And they're all thinking the same thing. And they do it fast. And then they're like, Pew! and they're gone. The substance is called the explosive. Number two, a consonant characterized by explosion in its articulation when it occurs in certain environments. And the synonym is stop. Stop. Pa, 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 pa. What are the other explosives? Now, now we do call those plosives. That's what I've heard people say. But are they actually called explosives? Um, I'm going to go to the word P-L-O, not E-X-P-L-O, to see if it's in here. But I feel like it should be, right? So um, what are some other plosives? A, B. B is not as intense as P, B, C, D, D kind of, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, T is a bit of a plosive, T, U, W, what, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, so we had B, D, P, T, those are the kind of plosives that I found, um, now let's see, yes, plosive, plosive is definitely in here, but it sends us to a different word. Whatever. Whatever. It's from, from the word explosive. <laughs> the next word is expo. Expo. Noun from 1913. This is the number three definition for the word exposition, which is going to be in the next word, next episode. I think yes. Yes, it is. Expo. The next word is exponent. Exponent. Noun from 1706. One. A symbol written above and to the right of a mathematical expression to indicate the operation of raising to a power. Two to the second power. The, the, let's do a different example where the numbers are not exactly the same. Two to the third power. The three is the exponent. It's the superscript, superscript three up and to the right, up there a little bit, which means you do two times two times two. Two times itself three times gets you what number? Can you, do you know the number? Two times two is four and four times two is eight, I think. Yes. 
And then if it was 2 to the 4th power, you would multiply that 8 by 2 again, and you'd get 16. And it just goes up exponentially. We're coming up to that soon. So that's the exponent. Uh, 2a is one that expounds or interprets. So you are, if you are expounding on a thing, expanding on what is already there, uh, interpreting it in some way, you would be an exponent? Hmm, I've never heard of it used that way. I guess I'm sort of an exponent for the dictionary, but I'm not, I, I guess I interpret some things, but I'm trying to expand and expound on things. But um, there's better examples. People who are expon they're exponents of literary works, they're reading it, they're talking about it, analyzing it, interpreting it. There's probably exponents of the Bible, I would guess. 2B is one that champions, practices, or exemplifies. And I don't really know how this is used in context either. They're champion. So if you are uh, rooting for somebody in a marathon, you would be their exponent. Why? Well, what's this word come from? What's what's its etymology? This is from the Latin exponere. Doesn't say what that means. And that, uh, there's more at the word expose. Hmm. Ah, so I guess if you're expounding or interpreting, you are exposing more information about it. That makes sense. Um, now, the symbol written above and to the right, why is that exponent? Well, it's probably because of our next word, <laughs> exponential. Adjective from 1704, number one, of or relating to an exponent. Could be a lot, could be anything. It could be that num little number. It could be somebody expounding or interpreting. It could be one who is championing, practicing, or exemplifying. They are all exponential. Two. Involving a variable in an exponent. Involving a variable in an exponent as in 10 to the x power is an exponential expression. 10, it's an x, yes, it doesn't really matter what the numbers are. Could be any numbers, could be any letters. Either way, it's an exponential function because there's an exponent. 3. Expressible or approximately expressible by an exponential function, like 10 to the x, or 2 to the 3, or 2 to the 3rd, that's more proper, but especially characterized by or being an extremely rapid increase, as in, oh, examples are size or extent, uh, as in an exponential growth rate. This is where you look at it on a chart, and let's see, if you're looking at the video, it's going to go this way. It starts off slow, gradually increase. Let's go down here. We got. If you're looking at the video, it goes down. It gets gradually raising, gradually raising. But then it's like, whoa, it like peaks and it goes whoo, up real high fast. So that's exponential. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. The number is getting exponentially bigger, rapidly growing. 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, uh, 4096, 8,000 something. Uh, 8,000, almost 200. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's an exponential growth. Um, the speed of technology, how fast technology improves and we get, we get to do things. Oh, this is a terrible way to use your words and explain things. You are not being a good exponent. The speed of a technology, we'll just say that the speed that technology advances over the years is exponential. I think that they have charted it and it basically, what did they say it like? The, it doubles, whatever it is, the, the speed of things, uh, the speed of computers, how how much, whatever, it, any sort of technology you're talking about, I think they say it like doubles every year or whatever the, 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 the formula is. And I've been thinking about this since I was a kid. It's like, well, what's going to happen? Are we going to get to a point where like we can advance technology so fast that humans can't even keep up with it. And I think that's where what we're living through right now is 
the next stage of that is where AI comes into everything. And AI is like, well, hey, we'll take over some of this technology boom that humans can't maybe even deal with. And we will, we will assist, we, AI will assist humans in being able to push technology further and faster. I, whether that or not that's a good thing, I'm not sure. Tech, to, I have mixed feelings about tech stuff in general, but you know, when it comes to like medicine, AI, machine learning is really, really helpful. It's going to allow us to progress much faster and do things that like our puny little brains can't even do. So yeah, tech, tech has exponential growth for sure. Uh, exponentially is an adverb. Um, I think that's it for that one. Now we got to go to the next word is exponential function noun from 1879, a mathematical function in which an independent variable appears in one of the exponents. And this is called also just exponential, uh, like the 10, 10 to the X power. That's an exponential function. Um, the independent variable appears in one of the exponents. I don't really know what it means that it has to be an independent variable. Is it just like any number or letter? But you can have like, I think I've seen like a parentheses in the exponent, you know, two plus X. What's X? <laughs> Next is exponentiation exponentiation noun from 1903 the mathematical operation of raising a quantity to a power and this is called also involution it's the operation when you when you are raising it to the power when you do the process of raising two to the third power you are doing exponentiation <laughs> Next is the first form of the word export. Verb from the 15th century, starting with transitive. One, to carry away. And the synonym is remove. I'm going to carry... I got another banana today. I'm going to carry my banana all the way over here. I have exported it from one side of the desk to the other. And oh my god, it's on this side again. What? How did that happen? Number two, to carry or send to some other place. And the thing that you might be sending is a commodity. That could be lots of things. Uh, a, a phone. We'll just say a smartphone could be a commodity. You're carrying or sending the phone um, from one place where the phone was made to another place like another country. A lot of our phones are made in China, and then they get exported to America, where the company that invented the phone exists, and then they have people working terrible hours, probably terrible jobs for terrible money, making them uh, cheap. They make them cheaply. <sighs> Exports. Lots of things are getting exported all over the world every day. Um, now we have intransitive, which is to export something abroad. The action of exporting. What's the difference? I don't know. Exportability is a noun and exportable is an adjective. Can it be exported? Can you send it from one country to another country? Yes, you can. It is exportable. Portable, hmm, interesting. Does that have something to do with the etymology? This is from the Latin exportare, which is from ex plus portare, which means to carry. Like portable, my banana is portable. Boop, 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 boop. It can move independently. I can move it. Like we just bought a new uh, portable air conditioner because they don't allow us to um, put put the uh, put the window AC units in the, on the windows facing the courtyard because it looks bad and so we, we got to get a portable ac unit it's on wheels it's not in it's not portable in the sense that 
you can just quickly move it. You got to still put the tube in the window and make it all sealed and everything. So it's like portable. It's got wheels. I, I, if you, if I wanted to move it from one room to the other room, I would have to export my portable AC unit. Uh, there's more at the word fare, F-A-R-E. Like you have to pay a fare when you are exporting these things, maybe? Is that? Hmm. But see, that's not... In, I don't know how that's connected. The next word is the second form of export. Noun from 1671. Number one, something exported. Specifically, a commodity conveyed from one country or region to another for purposes of trade. Uh, one country is making stuff and another country wants to buy that stuff. And so this country exports the stuff to that. They export the exports. So this country can say, oh, great, we got the stuff that we wanted made by another country, and we're so happy and pleased. We are happy to have these exports. They are imports to the second country. They are exports to the first country. Number two is the act of exporting. And the synonym is exportation, as in the export of wheat. The, the export of... Yeah, it's just the action of doing the exporting is also export. The third form of export is an adjective from 1795 of or relating to exportation or exports as in export duties. Export duties related to exportation or exports. Uh, there is another definition for export, which is not in here, which I guess, I, I don't know, I don't know if it's, if it's a new thing, but um, these days, something that's in my life all the time is working in a video program, an editing program, and you need to export your file. That's what we call it. You're exporting. Now, there's different terms, different programs, I guess, use different terms. Bounce is a term that the audio world has used for a lot of years. Um, render is another one. Let's, we have to render out your file. I always use export. Um, other forms of that are fine. Send, distribute, I don't know. But yeah, export seems to be like the main, the main one that a lot of us use. So, you know, you got to export it. You got you to gotta choose your settings, your compression settings. What's your data rate? What's your file size? Lots and not lots of other things that you got to choose. Is it two pass? Is it one pass? Is it VBR, CBR? You can get real granular with your export settings. And, uh, and you got to choose your location. Where is it going to export to? And then you let it run. Just yesterday at the end of, of my workday, I got into file exporting. Um, and, and I'm going to have to check it when I'm done here. You got it. You, you always got to check your exports. You got to QA your stuff. You got to make sure there's no errors. Come on. If you're not checking your work, you're not doing your job. Okay. One more. <laughs> that was the sound of the big bang. The last word is exportation. E-X-P-O-R-T-A-T-I-O-N. Noun from 1601. The act of exporting. Also, a commodity exported. The act of doing it and the thing that is exported is exportation. I have no experience with exporting things from one country to another country. I like to export things from my fridge into my mouth. That's what I will do. Okay, it's word of the episode time. Uh, we had today explorer, explosion, explosive, explosive, expo, exponent, exponential, exponential function, exponentiation, export, 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 exportation. Uh, well, I, I like exponential things. Those are always fun when there's exponential growth. It's like, whoa, it went so fast. Uh, but I think I'll just pick export as the word of the episode because um, in my day-to-day -day life, I am exporting lots of stuff. Um, 
I gotta send the video from my program to a, another location. Ooh, I don't like this song at all. <laughs> um, when I'm done with a video, I gotta export it. Export the video from your program. That was fine. Whatever. Um, hey, I do have another movie to tell you about. Um, we last night watched, I didn't even write it down. What am I looking at my phone for? I got to write it down. We watched Monkey Man. Dev Patel co came up with the story, co-wrote, directed, and starred in this movie. It's super fun. It's really good. And um, it's, I don't even want to say what I think it's like. It's a very fun action movie, but with some heart. Uh, it's, it's, it's showing the story, the plight of these poor Indian people, the caste system, the, you know, the classes, the class differences. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, Ooh, it's, it's heartbreaking in a lot of ways. He's, uh, that's it. Just go watch it. It's a, it's a, and it's beautiful. It's shot beautifully. Um, and, uh, what it was, there something else I wanted to say about it. He did. Oh, and then um, I love the fact that uh, Jordan Peele's production company got involved to help make it, and it's called Monkey Paw Productions. And Monkey Paw made Monkey Man, and I watched it when I was wearing a Charles Darwin and Chimp t-shirt on the day that the uh, episode with Natalia Reagan epi uh, episode aired, and we uh, were talking about monkeys and stuff, and so it was a very monkey day for me. Monkey day. All right, that is everything for this episode. Thank you very much for checking out this show. Please go ahead, share it, write a review. If you haven't done that, go ahead and write a review. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.